I just want to thank you for like having this conversation with me. I, I wanted to sit down and talk to you because I do look up to you in a lot of different ways. And I just think like, you're just a positive guy, and you also have a little bit more life experience. You're kind of like daddy goals for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hashtag daddy goals. All right, cool. Um, but daddy's obviously like a thing that uh, is kind of this concept that Are everybody people, knows. I, I feel I've noticed people have started calling you out as daddy. I've been getting that so much more lately. Right. Yeah, I have. Because I know me, I, obviously a lot of it has to do with my gray hair, and I've had right. gray hair since I was 28. When did that start for you? Uh, I think it probably started within the last handful of years, and right. I think it definitely has something to do with the fact that I'm like going so much more gray. Which you have great gray hair. Thank you so much, you yeah, too. Thanks. And uh, and also I think being a therapist, I think that definitely oh, lends sure, itself right to right, a yeah. little bit of kind of a right. parental daddyhood. Right, sure, right. <laughs> How do you define what daddy is? Uh, certainly for me at this age, I'm 51, and being a daddy, it's yes, I've had life experience. Mm -hmm. and. I maybe have a level of maturity that I didn't have in my, when I was 15, 25, 35 even. Yeah. Um, but I still love life. I was 15 uh -huh. uh, when I came out to my family. And so what I thought of as a daddy then was far different than I look at myself now. What did you think a daddy was then? There were a couple different types of daddies. Certainly guys that were, um, kind of had bigger in stature than I was, maybe more built than I was. Um, certainly gray hair-ish, but it wasn't always that. It was more just the presence that they had. Right. Um, and then also, I thought of people like who were serious adults, you know, <laughs> who, who were that much older yeah. than I was at the time. I think, yeah, when you're younger, definitely it, you kind of have more of a specific idea of what a daddy is, of like you have to be a certain way, you kind For of are sure. like, gruff and knowledgeable and serious yes. and all the rest of that and obviously it's a different thing when you get older and when I think of daddy it's like kind of looking up to somebody somebody who has a little bit more of that just just that kind of yeah. life experience I like I right. still wouldn't identify as that. <laughs> you are the daddy uh, yeah. come on come so, on I mean, daddy Albert, like where's my sash you know, on um, so wait if you're not a daddy then who's a daddy well the funny thing is I who's I guess... your daddy well, that's just it. Like, I, because now I am in that age group, like, well, who is a who is a daddy? And I think it yeah. becomes less about age and like kind of what you're talking about, and more about yeah. um, them them as a person, you know, sure. and like their personality or their level of success. Or I mean, how old are you? Thirty six. Okay. To me, you're a little young. I know, to but be as a daddy, I know, but that's kind of but why. It's how you, but it's then, uh, but I'm owning it. I'm kind of stepping into daddyhood. This is like a, a newer thing. I'm just trying to own it. You just trying to own, own it. it. Like gray hair signifies old. Yeah. Um, uh, unable to uh -huh. do certain things. Yeah. W again, whatever it is, and so yeah, as my 40s, it started to happen, and then now being at 51. Yeah. Um, you know, every now and then I'll get a comment like, hey, grandpa, or hang it up, grandpa, or, grandpa, or whatever it is. I'm like, okay. Oh, so you're getting granddaddy status oh, yeah, now. All of it, yeah. It's like, not just daddy. <laughs> well, and it can be hard because what you're saying about the age of society that we live in is true. That is a social reality. It's youth-obsessed culture. For sure. And so anything that signifies aging, though there might be some kind of, you know, perks or benefits in how people perceive that, overwhelmingly it's seen as a bad thing. But one of the things that, that I've always loved about you especially is that you have totally just like owned your age like you haven't tried especially in Los Angeles you haven't tried to cover it up and I've heard you kind of talk about this before like not like really doing like Botox or doing anything with wrinkles or trying to color your hair or anything like that so what what makes you decide not to do any of that well I, let me to be told I have used Botox oh you I, have absolutely no okay it's, it's not that I have that I am against it or that I have said no. that I've never used it I actually I absolutely have used okay it. I'm a proponent of doing things if you want to feel better about yourself i think there's a a balance absolutely you know you can't hide behind it right you know because no matter what you can have all this done <laughs> fixed whatever you can spend money on clothes you can spend money on this yes. you can all of it at the end of the day it's still you yes because if at the core if at the core you're really wrestling with deeper seated things about not feeling good about who you are or feeling inadequate in some way if you just look to the exterior to be the thing that's going to fix that it's not going to work because you could clear your face up you could change your clothes yes. but then it's going to be the next thing that you're going to project onto as i've gotten older i still maintain a positive perspective sure. but i can feel some just very human fears of like ah, does my skin look like 
like that? Ugh, what's happening? Is this the decline? <laughs> you know? I see it in my skin. Like, okay. oh, yeah, so just my, just kind of my complexion. It just doesn't feel like as like taut. As it may be used to. Tight right now. Thank you so you much. Great. I appreciate that. I accept that. Let's have this conversation in another ten or twenty years. We'll come back to that. Right, and so it might be a little bit different. A little bit. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I looked up to older gay guys, and I wanted to be around them, and I was interested. But I wasn't. I wasn't sexually attracted. Sure. I didn't want to date them. Right. I've always been attracted to older. So you wanted to date. I always. I. I uh, okay. Went, my yeah. My first boyfriends were older. Do you remember thinking that that was weird that you felt that or no. different? You just, it was not a thing or? No. It seemed someone who was older had it more together, uh. which necessarily wasn't true. For me, it's always been attracted to older. And then I remember the first time I dated someone my age and was in a relationship with them, it was eye opening for me. Wow. We literally are the same age and we're interested in the same things. So, and now I'm with someone who actually is 17 years younger. Whoa. Oh, so real daddy. Not... Okay, wait a minute. So you just kept dating the same age and you just kept getting older. I just kept getting older. <laughs> so what's it like now dating a younger person? Initially was like, no way. <laughs> not, not interested. I realized I had some judgment. Yeah. About a stereotype. Right. I was the older guy with the younger guy. Yeah. Listen, it's too easy to fall into that whole thing of like, sugar daddy. Sugar daddy, you're, you're being taken care, care of, of like, all you know, of it. Like, and I, you know, one <clears> of... Um, when I was 20, I dated someone who was 42. Yeah. And it was probably the first big love of my life. Mm. And yeah, it was sweet. He was an amazing guy. Um, which actually ended up being a sad story. We, we broke up, but we remained friends for many, many years. Mm -hmm. He actually committed suicide. Wow. Because he felt he had aged out of the community. Oh. How old was he when he took his life? Um, 60s, maybe. He was wildly accomplished good-looking guy, incredible friends. He felt um, invisible yeah. in this community, in the culture. He wasn't wanted. <sighs> I, as a 51-year-old, in certainly gay culture, but in culture in general, as a, I'm, living my, I'm living my best life to the fullest. And I don't have it all together, Yeah. by any means. And every day, I still wake up, I'm curious, I want to learn more, I want to experience more, but I also embrace what I have done. Sure. How have you maintained such a good, positive attitude? Listen, it's hard, you know? I... Because I think people take it for granted. They see you and they think, oh, he's just like, it's just, everything's easy for him or he, it's just easy for him to be positive. And people don't realize the work it takes. I, I, 100%, no, and I appreciate you saying that. It's, there are days where you're just in a spiral and the spiral's going down and down and yes. down. And I see it happening. Yeah. And I feel it happening. Yeah. And I'm getting darker and darker and darker. And, and I remember when I was struggling when I first got sober, they said, just get on your knees yeah. because it grounds you. It connects you yeah. to something outside of your, or kind of outside of your head. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that'll be enough. Because it is, because it means you're searching for gratitude. And even in some of your darkest moments when you're spinning, when you can say, I don't understand this, I don't understand why this is happening, but if I keep myself open to it and allow myself to consider that this is something that's happening for me, not sure. to me, you know, then, then there can be something really helpful and healing and freeing in that. How do you, doing the work that you do, obviously there's so much visibility too, right? Um, with social media and, you know, kind of brand stuff. How do you make sure that you keep your intentions right on why you're doing what you're doing as opposed to just wanting to like be seen and get the attention? Hey, listen, I, I'll fall into that. You know, is this, does it look right? Is the lighting right? Is the, you know, is, you know, what about my hair? Oh my God, you can, there's too many, whatever. It, 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 I, is it going to get likes? I mean, it was a whole thing. Yeah. I think I was having a low day. Yeah. How did you steer that ship then? Listen, we physicalize it too. Yeah, you know? for sure. And I you was, can feel the tension. I was so tense. Yeah. We're, we're going to have feelings. We're going to get tense. We're going to be afraid that we're not enough. But when we start to recognize what the signs are for that, then it doesn't have to be a bad thing. We don't have to feel shameful about it. We can use that as a barometer for us. This obviously is coming from a different place. This isn't about what's before me, but this is like something that I'm wrestling with. And so what can I do differently? How do I open myself up? Absolutely. And how do I practice self-love in a new way and really take a step back from it? Do you feel as you've gotten older that you've become more accepting of your body? Sure. I Listen, and there's days I'm like, I... How have you become more accepting as years have gone on? To me, it extends more out of my character. And yes, I have gray hair, and yes, I'm older. But it, I think it, it, that's, that's where I find I like to live. Totally. 
Well, I think that that is a great place to end. <laughs> but thank you. I love having this conversation. I love having this conversation with you too. So good. Thank Thanks. you for having. Hopefully, I gave you some some tips on how to be, embrace your dad. Oh, you definitely did. Thank you. Oh, yes. Now I feel so much more confident entering into daddyhood. Look like a daddy. Well, thank you. Yes.